then you could, it's gone so much that the only people who call today to hearing and obeying, they are the ones who the people say about them what? Scholars for dollars. The ulama of sultan, they are the scholars and the paid uh, employees of the rulers, they only speak in a way that makes the rulers happy. They are the pets and the watchdogs of the rulers and so on. You've heard this much from the people of takfir. You hear it very clearly and loudly coming right from this ISIS group. That the ulama like Sheikh Saleh al fawzan these are scholars for the hukam. They have no sincerity, they have no dedication to Islam, they have no real care for the ummah. And some of them boast about when they come to Saudi Arabia, they plan to remove the head of Sheikh Salah and Fawzan. This is the Islamic uh, uh, you know, uh, government that the people are calling to, saying we are not Khawarij. We are not Khawarij, huh? If you are not Khawarij, then why do you kill the Muslims for their sins? And if you are not Khawarij, then what plans would exist amongst you to kill the very best of this Ummah, the likes of Sheikh Salah and Fawzan, you are sufaha, you are people who just like Abdullah ibn Abbas said, you have no one with you from the Sahaba. When Abdullah ibn Abbas went to the Khawarij and they rebelled, and they were rebelling against the Muslims, Abdullah ibn Abbas said, who do you have with you? Which Sahabi, which scholar is with you? Which person of knowledge is with you? That same question can be asked to the Khawarij today. What people of knowledge are with you? Name a scholar that this ummah knows, that has supported you and said, yes, this is the true Islamic state and all of the Muslims should give their hands in allegiance to this Islamic state. Name one scholar that Muslims truly knew of before the advent of this group. They'll list you a long list of names that you've never heard of before. And they'll give you the pitch that you don't know all the scholars. There are so many scholars all over Allah's earth and you don't know them. And it's a trick, my dear brothers and sisters. Those are not scholars. Those are the invented, propped up pieces of wood that they're putting in front of you to make you think these scholars support them. The scholars are those who are well known. They existed a couple years ago before ISIS existed. And they are available for anyone who stands up to promote Islam and they will support them and they will have their hands with their hands. Yet when the Khawarij pop up, when people of deviance pop up, you will find the scholars of Islam will speak against them. And our scholars have told us that whoever has given them the Pledge of Allegiance has given the Pledge of Allegiance to a shaytan, to the devil himself. You, are, you do not give the Pledge of Allegiance to the Khawarij, rather the Khawarij. And battling against the Khawarij is jihad fi sabilillah. Fighting against them is jihad in the way of Allah. Real, true jihad. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said if he met them, that he would fight them with the fighting of Ad, with the destruction intended like how Ad was destroyed. And he mentioned the rewards for those who had reached the time of the Khawarij and fight them. So don't be tricked by a media campaign, by a nice video or a nice uh, in invitation to understand how ISIS really truly implements a balanced Sharia with no excessiveness and all of that. Rather go to your scholars and ask your scholars, is this call a call to rectifying Allah's earth? Is this call a call to implementation of the Sharia that we support and that we get behind? And your scholars will not fail you. But look at their plot. Their plot is to say, your scholars are only scholars for dollars. But we can negate that and we can reject that. Look at the strength of the words of Shaykh Muhammad, Aman al Jami, who wasn't even a Saudi, wasn't even a Saudi, he's from Habasha. Look at his words. Look at his words of scholarship. Look at his piety. He wouldn't take the salary that was given to him as a, as a professor at the academic institute in Riyadh. And he would sleep in the masjid. SubhanAllah. Scholars for dollars. Look closely at those being called scholars for dollars, the real ulama, the scholars of Islam, and you will find them pious people, you will not find them extravagant people. For sure there are people who have knowledge of Islam and they'd like to sell that knowledge for money and for wealth and for precious jewels and whatever, they would like that. Then 
One of the signs of those people is the presence of money, the presence of wealth, the presence of extravagant wealth. You won't find in such people generosity in helping the people and they themselves have nothing. Subhanallah. Shaykh ibn Baz, it was said about him, scholar for dollar, right? Government agent, scholar and all of that. Yet people, the people don't know his salary from the government was given out months ahead of its time to the poor and the needy before it even came down. And so when people would come to his office where people managed his money to request some assistance because he promised them something, some of them would be told, I'm sorry, we have nothing for you. And they would say, but the shaykh promised me some assistance. And they would say, quite frankly, I'm sorry, but he has given away his income for the next number of months and he has nothing that he could offer you at this time. These are your scholars for dollars. Scholars with no furniture in their house who sit on the floor as you are now. A scholar for dollars would have a very extravagant house, I'm sure, wouldn't he? If there's a scholar for dollars, he's not sitting on the floor, he's not sleeping in the masjid, he's not giving away his entire salary in charity. What would the point of being a scholar for dollars be if he doesn't want the money? That's a person who's greedy, and a person who wants money. Think and reflect and look past the claims that people make. Some people want you to think that simply by taking a salary from the Muslim government puts you in a category of being a paid employee of the government. Subhanallah. Go back in Islamic history throughout the years of the Khulafa. What do you think the job of the Muslim ruler is when it comes to promoting the religion? His obligation is to set up scholars to teach and to fund them to travel and to call to Islam and to teach, to put salaries for them so they can be full-time dedicated to teaching the people. That's the job of Wali al-Amr. That's his obligation that Allah put on him. He's accountable in front of Allah that the wealth that he has been blessed with is used to promote the religion, to make the ulama available to the people. So how in the world is it a point of criticism that the scholar is on a salary from the government? Because that's the foundation of Islam that has always existed. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how did he fund Mu'ad ibn Jabba when he sent him to Yemen? Do you know? He sent him to, to Yemen to be a qadi, to be a ruler. Where did he get the money from? How did he make his living? How did he manage to live? He would live by the zakat money that he would collect there, he would live by the endorsement, the backing of the Muslim government that sent him. So he would collect the zakat from the kinds of zakat or the ways you spend the zakat is on the workers that collect the zakat, right? So from the treasury of the Muslim state, you would organize the payments for those who would collect the zakat and those who manage the zakat monies. And Mu'adh ibn Jabr was one of the many that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent. And the Messenger would give to the people and the people would receive money from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This went on in the time of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq and Omar organized it more. The second Khalifa, he organized salaries in a way that hadn't been done before. Rawatib and his salaries and he set everything in place and organized it even more. From the very beginning of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, this is the way of Islam. That the scholars are paid financially to be available. They are supported financially by the Muslim state as an obligation, not an option, not an act of charity or benevolence. As an obligation, it is required that the Muslim rulers support and finance the spread of this religion. So where is the blame? How is that a blameworthy thing? If you cooperate with the Muslim rulers who tell you to spread the message of Islam based on the book, the sunnah and the way of the salaf, how can you be blamed? This is the way that Allah Ta'ala facilitates for these people to be available to everyone around the clock. And these scholars for dollars, subhanAllah, that people would like to call them. The likes of Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz. The likes of Shaykh Abdul Aziz, Ali Shaykh, the current present Mufti, Hafizahullah Ta'ala. I visited him in his house, and I visited him in his masjid, and I attended his lectures 
at some of the masajid. And the man is nothing but a walking form of assistance to the Muslims. That everywhere he goes, he's being questioned by the Muslims about matters. He sits to wait for salah, there's someone on his right or left asking a question. After the salah, he's being asked. He's ushered back to his house. Why? Because there are people there waiting with questions. Phone calls ringing at his house. His time for relaxation. Last year I was blessed to visit him and to see his time for relaxing after Asr in his house, in his private sitting area. Comes and sits on the floor like you people are sitting on the floor. He's an old man, he's blind. And he comes in and he sits on the floor like you people are sitting on the floor. And he leans back and he has people reading books to him and people asking him questions, women on the phone calling with issues. So he's between a question, reading a passage from a book, answering a comment or a point of concern, picking up a phone call. That's his relaxation time. These are your scholars for dollars. Wallahu musta'an. The trick is to turn you against your scholars by any number of ways. To say they're employees, or to say they don't care about you. And these are the ulama, they say they don't care about you. They make this image that they're so engrossed in their books like this, they never even look at you. They're just buried in these books. That's all they are, academically buried in books. They don't even know you or care about you. Who's saying this? The people who wish to turn you away from your scholars. When you go there, you will see nothing of the sort. If you visit your ulama, you will see nothing of these claims. You will see concern and love. You will see the likes of our ulama answering the phone in the middle of the night. You don't answer the phone in the middle of the night. You know, if you have a call at three in the morning, you probably just turn the phone over and get it in the morning. Ulama answering the phone 24 hours a day, worried about the situation in the various Muslim lands. Phone calls from uh, Algeria, from Nigeria, from Pakistan, from India. Phone calls coming in from all over the world, all hours of the day and night, and they're answering the phone. Subhanallah. Worried and concerned. And when we would come to, uh, we would listen and sit with our Shaykh, Shaykh Rabi ibn Hadi, and we would see people come with concerns about the da'wah from various lands. And we would hear stories about how the da'wah was unsuccessful in a certain place. And what happened, and the shaykh would be giving his advice. And you would see tears in the eyes of the shaykh that the da'wah didn't make progress. That the da'wah wasn't moving forward. That someone wasn't behaving as a proper da'i should and so on. You would see tears of sadness from the man's eyes. That he wanted the da'wah to be successful. The man who would read from books of seerah, books of history about the imams of guidance and the troubles that they faced. And he would listen to those stories and he would ask the reader, Ewa, Ewa, what happened next? What happened next? Like how the people of entertainment watch TV and they're entertained by these stories. He would listen to the reading of the seerah of the imams and his heart would be involved. Hafidhahullah Ta'ala. May Allah Ta'ala preserve him. He would be involved and engaged. And these are the people that you are saying, scholars for dollars, not concerned for the ummah. In fact, it's the opposite. They're the least of the people ever to be referred to as greedy, out for money. They're the last of Allah's creation, by Allah's permission, that they are unconcerned for the ummah, that they have little, they don't care much about what's going on. The people who trick you, they say, the event that happened yesterday, they, you know, when an event happens in the world, something happened in a, in, a, in a certain country yesterday. Why is the shaykh not speaking about it? See, he's silent. He doesn't know about the ummah. He doesn't know what's happening. And you find some politically ambitious so-called shaykh ready to pop up and speak as soon as it's in the newspapers. Why is that? Ambition. Ambition. And what? Sloppy approach. Lack of concern for establishing the facts before speech. And our scholars that, yes, something happened yesterday. They're not going to speak until all the facts are in. Until they've heard what has happened from reliable sources, not from the non-Muslim news agencies and whatnot. But they take time to sort through the matter so that when they speak, they speak with what will be clean and pure benefit based on accurate facts. So these sick-minded people, they come and they say, look at your scholars, they won't talk. So I'll talk because I love you. 
because I'm concerned for you, because I know you need to hear scholarly advice now, so let me talk, and I'll tell you what we should be doing. Because those older scholars, those senior scholars, they're just too busy sitting in their air conditioning with their faces buried in the books. That's the trick that they have. Some of the tricks we've discussed this evening. And may Allah Ta'ala give us basira, give us insight, allow us to be critical of the claims that people make against the very best of Allah's awliya, the very best of Allah's beloved, of His, mo- of His closest worshippers. May Allah give us true insight to go beyond what is being said and see the reality of those who care about us and those who are concerned for us. Subhanallah. Hada wallahu a'lam. Sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.